verse 23. And it says, And the counsel of Ahimophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the article of God. Do you see that? That means he had some powerful counsel. So was all the counsel of Ahimophel, both with David and Absalom. So that means, no matter if he counseled David, it was if God was speaking, and if he counseled Absalom, it was if God was speaking. You got a heavy betrayal when you got a man like that. Amen? Amen. You got somebody coming against you. How you gonna handle it? How do you handle people who come against you today? Oh, or are you an hypocrite? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's go to chapter 17. Look at verse 21 to 23. Ready? And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus has Ahimophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over to Jordan. By the morning light they, there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. And when Ahimophel saw, watch this show. And when Ahimophel saw that his counsel was not found, he saddled his ass and arose and got his home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order. He put everything in order, right? And what did he do? He hung himself and died and was burned in a sepulcher of his father. The reason why I brought that out and said is this. If you handle the person who betrays you correctly, let them hang themselves. Amen. Don't you try to go against the person who betrays you. Amen. Let them hang themselves. Amen. Judas hanged himself. Amen. If you try to fight against the person who betrayed you, you ain't going to win. Amen. You got to let them. Matter of fact, I didn't have a ministry until my Judas hung himself. You don't even have a ministry until you get a Judas. Right. How many of you got Judases today? Amen. Let them hang themselves. Yes. Stop arguing with your Judas. Stop fighting with your Judas. Stop even calling your Judas. Guess what you got to do with your Judas? You got to love him. My Judas in the church, my first ministry that failed with men, this man walked me south. I helped him became a deacon. I helped brothers become ministers. You know, I'm older than men. Then all of a sudden, this Judas comes. He didn't want to do nothing. He came against me. I'm going to make a long story short. When Judas started making little innuendos about me, right. and because of my what? Activating his hand. And my belief about it, because I'm from the hood, you ain't going to, you just ain't going to do me like that. But I didn't know God's glory, because I wanted to keep my ministry. I didn't know God had three more other ministries for me to deal with. Hello? But what did Judas do? He began to pick on my family a little bit. He began to bad mouth in the church. And the church believed him. That counsel of Ahimophel, huh? Mm -hmm. So I stepped walking around and acting wild because me and Judas separated from my first wife. Now we living in a minister's home and he had a room and I had a room and I would walk by him every day and say, you know, uh, um, um, the chickens are coming home to roost. Now, now most of y'all know what that means. <laughs> That's what Malcolm X said about, yeah, one man got it. That's what Malcolm X said about uh, mm -hmm. JFK. Because when they murdered somebody and he got assassinated, they said that was nothing but the chickens coming home to roost. And that's when he got kicked out of his home. But again, I would just walk by all the time and say, chicken coming home to roost soon. I knew he didn't know. Right. But what he had to understand is I'm the great bust a hole in his butt. Right. So I decided to do it religiously. After a couple of times, I called a friend. No, first the scripture said, I went to him and said, look, man, let's move this thing out between me and you. But I went wrong because I went still in anger. I didn't gain my brother. Then the second time, I'm going, I bring a friend. All right, we're going to come at you again. Do, do, do this one more time. You know, let's just cool down. We'll do another one more time. But third time, I called the church. I said, look, y'all, we're going to knock this dude out. You know, he's a big boy, too, from Jamaica. And I was skinny on crack, but he still thought I was weak. He just didn't know. I fought big almost all my life. You know, I got knocked out plenty of days. I like getting knocked out because I didn't have to cry over whooping. So my homies <laughs> used to knock me out. So I just kept telling the church, church, y'all better get this guy. They didn't do nothing. They kept believing him. I called him a second time. Look, 
It's just one more time. So they sent a minister to the house. Sit down and counsel us. This guy had a pot and claimed that I did something with his pot. As soon as he raised that handle, I just swung. Hit it. We started fighting. Next thing I know, he wanted to do some karate step. Hey I said, man, that stuff is going to get you knocked out. He gave one kick. I hit him in his jaw. He fell. And I gave him the tattoo from the hood, which broke my wrist from him. So I got some pain out of that, too. And I went to jail that night. Hello. But I didn't handle my Judas right. Amen. I had no business beating that man up. But it was in my heart to do it. Wasn't nobody going to stop it. I used scripture religiously to get with him. Amen. Because I wanted to whip his butt. Because he destroyed me. But now let's see what Jesus did with his juice. And hopefully you'll do the same thing Jesus did with his juice. Because I got a second opportunity to have a juice. And because I handled this juice the second time around correctly, that's why I'm standing before you today. Amen? Amen. 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 Because my Judas could have killed me. But was it really him that could have killed me? No. Or was it my belief and my emotions that out, what? Made me act in what? Inappropriate behavior. Amen? I was stupid. I had to go back and forgive him. The Lord even told me to go buy him a Christmas present. Lord, you must be crazy. But when I humbled myself and said, God, I will buy him a present, next thing I know, that Judas was coming to me in the church saying, Brother, forgive me. Because God saw my heart. I never bought him a Christmas present. But when I made up in my mind, God, I will do what you tell me to do, I go to church and here he comes, brother. I just want to let you know I'm college. Then that Judas got caught doing all kinds of things in the church. They found out who was the kind artist for real. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. I allowed God to get the victory. Amen. And that's what you need to do to let God get the victory. Let's go to Matthew. Matter of fact, go to Acts first. Let's see what happens to you. Go to Acts chapter 1 first, and then we'll go to Matthew. Y'all get anything out of it so far? Yeah. All right. Now, y'all got a real Old Testament story about a hip I didn't want to get too deep. I can even get deeper with that. But I just want y'all to get the concept of dealing with your activated event. Uh, one, Acts 1. I want you to see what will happen to Judas and the way they describe what happened to Judas. You know, most people think it's in the Gospels. No, it's right here in Acts 1. It tells you exactly what happened to him. All right? We've seen it in the movies and all that. The movies can't even just depict it the way this Bible depicts it. Look at verse 18. Now, this man purchased a field because Judas uh, gave him money back because he got convicted. Remember that? 30 pieces of silver. And they didn't even take the money back. They what? Gave him for a field. Right? So, there you go. That's right. So he said, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity for the money was sent. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and his bowels gushed out. Amen. You know what your bowels are, don't you? All his insides, the only home, boom, gushed right out. Let God handle your Jews. Now, let's go to Matthew 26. And if you are being a Judas today, don't let God bust out your bowels, man. Go humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. Amen? Because I need to tell you. Let me tell you what else Judas represents. Your addiction. Let me say that again. Your addiction represents Judas. The alcohol bottle is Judas. The crack pipe is Judas. That woman you ain't marrying and sleeping with is Judas. That man you ain't married or sleeping with is Judas. You know why? Because they're taking the gift that God has given you called your anointing and sapping you dry. Hello. Demons are sick because you're anointed. You wouldn't be going through this if you weren't anointed. They are there. You think people are attracted to you because you look good? They are attracted to the anointing and the God in you. And they want to sap it. Hello. You be thinking you're getting something great. Even the devil sends you a certain amount of money because he knows what you're going to do with it. You sack your anointing. That's only if you're spiritual with God, that is. Amen. You be like, oh man, I got this fine woman, I got this fine man. No. They were sent by the enemy to take your anointing and rob you blind. 
that leave you sapped and dry. Believe me, I know. Amen. So you have a Judas reigning in the Bible, I mean in the bottle, in some woman's body or man's body, and some crack bottle. Because guess what they all are? They're spiritual, dude. This is a spiritual warfare. Amen? Amen. Let's start at verse 1, Matthew 26 and 1. Ready? Let's read this story. Amen. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is be what? Trained to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes, those religious folk, and the elders, elder people, and unto the palace of the high priest, who was called uh, uh, Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Verse 6, now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, very precious, very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as it sat at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. They got angry. And saying, to what purpose is this waste? For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. <laughs> And when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? For she has wrote a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burden. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial unto her. Ain't that something? He's still talking about Mary Magdalene today, aren't we? <clears throat> Amen. I'm reading it to you now, so it's still being talked about. Let's keep going. Then one of the twelve called who? Judas. Judas Iscariot. They mentioned him full name. Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, what will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. That means he made a binding oath with them, Jack. See, a covenant is different from a promise, people. I can promise you all day and break it. But when I make a covenant with you, I better keep it. Got me? Amen. Verse 16. And from that time, he sought opportunity to portray him. He saw opportunity to portray Jesus. Now, the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Now, you need to know what unleavened bread is. God, Lord, just stop here. You have unleavened bread, right? right? And you have unfermented wine. Unleavened bread. See, people always talk about, we can drink wine in the Bible. It was in the Bible. No, that's called unfermented, meaning it didn't sit and turn into alcohol. So that meant it was grape juice. Amen. <laughs> So, watch this. An unleavened bread means it didn't have any yeast in it. How many of you ever had a cracker? That's unleavened bread. So, if it's unfermented and have no yeast, when you drink wine unfermented, guess what that means? And you eat bread unleavened, guess what that means? You're eating it without sin. So, when you're drinking grape juice, that's the Lord's body and blood of his body. When you drink, eat unleavened bread, that's his body. We're not eating sin. No yeast, no sin. Unfermented, no sin. Amen? Amen. I think I had to stop and give y'all a break on that one. All right? So y'all be eating no sin when you have the Holy Communion. Amen? That's why it says if you eat it with sin, you can get sick and die. If you eat it with unforgiveness in your heart, you can get sick and die. Oh, amen. Amen. That's why sometimes when I'm mad at somebody, I ain't taking the Holy Communion. Because I don't want to get sick and die. Because I haven't forgiven you. But people do religiously. Just, ah, ah, ah. Close my mouth. Verse 17 again. Now, the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, 
The master said, my time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at my house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed him, and they made ready the Passover. Verse 20. Now, when the eve was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it me? Am I going to do this? Is it me? Verse 23. And he answered and said, He that did his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Oh, my goodness. Now, another version said, he that I pass the sock to. Because, see, you need to understand, sock is very important. The sock, when the Jewish person dips his bread in that sock and passes it to you, he is saying, you're my brother, I love you, just like my blood family. So, when he passed that sock to Judas, in another translation, or another gospel, he's telling Judas, don't do this thing to me. I love you, you're my brother. Don't betray me. Don't do this to me. How many of you have parents who said, don't do this no more to me? <laughs> don't hurt me no more. That's why I won't let you in the house, because you're going to hurt me. That's why I won't give you the money, because you're going to hurt yourself and me. Mom, stop, please. Daddy, please stop it. I had my cry at you like that. Don't do that no more. I love you. <laughs> Just even me saying that is making me get emotional. But do we care? We did it anyway. We did it anyway. Amen. Amen. Verse 23. And he answered and said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. 24. The Son of Man goeth as it was written of him. But woe, that word woe means judgment. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been. Oh, my God. It had been good if that man had not been there. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it me? <laughs> I like that part. Is it me? Knowing deep in his heart, he had already set up the plan. <laughs> is it me? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. <laughs> you said. <laughs> Look at that. You said. 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. There we go, unleavened bread. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink, you are of it. There's the blood. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Thank you. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. All you shall be, I see this is where I want to get to. All you shall be offended because of me. This night. So was Judas the only one who betrayed him? No, no. Hello, no. no, no. let's keep reading. <clears throat> For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, kill the shepherd, and the sheep. Watch this. Anytime you want to stop a movement, you kill the leader. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, JFK, Robert F. Kennedy. Kill the leader, you stop the movement. Mahatma Gandhi. Kill the leader, you stop the movement. Cut off the head, the body falls. Hello. I don't know why, boy, that just came out of me. Thank you, Lord. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be what? Scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you in the Galilee. And Peter answered and said, Hello, Peter. And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou all men shall offend because of thee, yet will I never be offended. <laughs> And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. And Peter said unto him, Thou I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. See that? They all said they wouldn't do it. They all betrayed. 
between. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let me read some stuff to you. Here are the things that are broken out of our relationship, and how do we fix them? Amen. We'll read from the book a little bit. I know we ain't got much time, but there's a couple things I want to do. There are mistakes made by all parties in all human relationships, assuming that both parties want to heal their wound or broken relationship. <laughs> the steps to full recovery and the continued healthy relationship you get in with God. First thing you got to do is admit your mistakes. According to God's plan and this law of human development, every mistake is an opportunity for correction. Amen. Humans grow with negative feedback, correction, and change. It humans grow. You can't grow unless you have some mistakes. But if you don't capitalize off of the mistakes, you stay the same. Amen. I've learned from mine, matured from mine, and realized I'm not going to make them ever again because I recognize what they are now. But if you're still going around the same old cycle, you haven't learned a thing. And you want to stay that way. It is by correcting our mistakes that we humans grow and make progress in our individual character development and the development of our relationships. The reason some individuals and relationships experience little or no growth is that one or both parties cannot admit to having made a mistake or being wrong. Nobody ever wants to be wrong. <laughs> it takes very mature and spiritual persons to confess mistakes and ask for forgiveness. Anybody ready to get mature tonight? Amen. 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 Number two, correcting your mistakes. No change equals no growth. I like to always say change requires change. You want someone to change, you must first change first. The word sin, as used in the Bible, can often be translated literally as missing the mark. So when we say you sin, you missed the mark. Or you're off track, dude. Man, you way off track, man. Amen. Relationships also miss the mark and get off track. By having open, honest communication, admitting or putting your cards on the table, especially about the nine important issues cited above. Now, I didn't go through all of them, but I want to get through this because there were nine important issues I didn't cover. They were religion, church, money, family, children and child care, sex, work and career, individual roles and expectations, and education. Amen? But it says, uh, side to those issues above, you can tell just how far you are missing the mark. Out of agreement or not walking together. The ability to see mistakes, confess them, and then go about the work of correcting them in the path of self-growth. Confess them. Then go about the road of correcting them. Amen? Amen. Confess them. You know, your heart is broken when you're ready to confess them. I ain't ashamed about nothing, man. You know why? Because I got a guy who covered me with his blood. You can't embarrass me. Nobody can. And I thank God for that. Yeah, I did. And thank God I decided I'm not going to do it again. And there are some things I still decide to do, and I say, God, thank you for your covering. Help me get through it. Amen. The ability to see mistakes, confess them, and then go about the work of correcting them is the path for self-growth, relationship growth, and the spiritual growth, which is called sanctification. I think Pastor will teach you on that. By using that ABCD process, you can mentally rehearse your mistake. Trace your self-defeating thought self-destructive thought, trace it down there, and replace them with a spiritual replacement thought. Amen. <laughs> when you ask yourself the healing question in the not-too-distant future, I need you to ask yourself a healing question. Hopefully, if you don't want to do it tonight, not-too-distant future. If the same or something similar should happen, what will I say differently to myself in order to get the positive result? Okay. You get a question from someone, yo, man, let's go smoke some crack. Right? That self-destructive thought activating the event comes. You choose to do it that night. Here I come. Now I know what day you get paid when you want to have some money. I'm coming back. <laughs> yo, man, let's go smoke some crack. <laughs> you knew it didn't work. 
What are you going to do? 